My name is Eitan, and I'm presenting a new approach for error structural optimization that includes detailed mission analysis in the loop. I'll begin by discussing why error structural analysis and optimization is important for aircraft wing design, and why traditional design methods may not be good enough for regional and narrowbody aircraft. Next, I'll introduce our new approach that uses a detailed mission analysis model in the error structural optimization to accurately compute the fuel burn throughout the mission. Then, I'll discuss the results of the optimization using this new approach and explain how it finds a better result. Finally, I'll propose a new low-cost fuel burn estimate that can be easily used within traditional high-fidelity aerostructural optimization codes. Being able to analyze the interaction between the aerodynamic and structural performance of an aircraft wing is integral to aircraft design. It enables aircraft designers to develop wings that strike the best balance of low structural weight and high aerodynamic performance. We can take advantage of this aerostructural analysis to simultaneously optimize the wing's shape and wing box structure. This video shows one of those optimizations. The goal of these optimizations is to minimize fuel burn. Most of the aerostructural optimizations in the past are of wide body sized aircraft. Narrow body and regional aircraft make up more than half of aviation's global carbon dioxide emissions. Therefore, we need tools that can perform aerostructural optimization on these aircraft to minimize aviation's climate impact. The reason it's more common to optimize wide body aircraft wings is because of the assumptions made when computing the fuel burn objective. These optimizations use the Breguet range equation with data from one or more aerostructural analyses and crews to estimate the fuel burn of the mission. This approach requires only a couple aerostructural analyses to compute fuel burn, but it ignores different flight conditions in climb and descent. For shorter missions, incorporating climb and fuel burn is important since it makes up a significant portion of the total fuel burn. The Breguet range equation used in traditional aerostructural optimization assumes constant flight speed, constant lift to drag ratio, and constant specific fuel consumption. Traditional optimizations use a single analysis and cruise to compute the lift to drag ratio. Flight speed and specific fuel consumption come from existing flight data and other estimates. By setting lift equal to weight and thrust equal to drag, fuel flow rate can be computed. Integrating fuel flow rate gives fuel burn the objective function. This approach is called single point because it uses a single point in cruise to approximate the fuel burn. Using only a single analysis point often results in poor off-design performance. By using analyses at a few different cruise conditions and averaging the fuel burns from each, we can improve off-design performance. This approach is called multi-point. Let's compare the Breguet approximation to the actual parameters of a mission, shown in blue. The airspeed, lift to drag ratio, specific fuel consumption, and fuel flow are quite accurate where the aerostructural analysis was performed in cruise, the middle segment. In climb and descent, the assumptions aren't so valid. Notice that the fuel flow rate in climb is substantially higher than cruise or descent. For missions flown by regional and narrowbody aircraft, where the climb and cruise segments are similar lengths, it's important to give the optimizer this information so it knows how to balance the lower speed performance in climb versus transonic performance in cruise. For a 737-sized aircraft, the fuel burn in climb makes up a substantial portion of the mission fuel burn for shorter flights. Since low speed and climb performance are not considered in traditional aerostructural optimization, we need a new way of computing fuel burn for aerostructural optimization on these short missions. To accurately model the fuel burn for a given mission, we use a tool called Open Concept. It discretizes the mission and balances the forces of flight at each integration point. It then integrates fuel burn and other states across the mission to compute total fuel burn. To be able to compare this new method against traditional ones across different mission ranges, we define a mission profile that can be easily scaled to any range. The climb and descent segments stay constant, and the cruise segment is stretched to meet the desired mission range. This mission profile is not totally realistic at the extreme short and long distances, but it provides a flexible way to fairly compare the different optimization methods. For the aerostructural analysis, we use a tool called Open Aerostruct. It uses a finite element beam model and vortex lattice flow solver. While it's very fast, plugging it directly into Open Concept's mission analysis loop would be impractical and slow. Instead, we use a surrogate model trained with aerostructural analyses. The surrogate model takes an altitude, angle of attack, and Mach number, and returns lift and drag coefficients. This animation shows the lift and drag coefficients with respect to angle of attack and Mach number as it sweeps through the range of altitudes. Using this surrogate model, Open Concept approximate the fuel burn to within about a tenth of a percent. We now have all the tools we need to do aerostructural optimization with an accurate, numerically integrated fuel burn model in the loop. We call this mission-based optimization. The goal of the optimization is to minimize fuel burn by varying the wing's planform shape, twist, thickness to cord, and structural sizing. 
a 2.5G maneuver condition constrains the structural stresses. Let's first look at the optimization on the 300 nautical mile mission. This mission has a very short cruise segment, so almost all the fuel is burned in climb. This cruise segment is unrealistically short. A lower cruise altitude would probably be used in practice. Nonetheless, this shows the flexibility and benefit of mission-based optimization. The mission-based optimization knows that most of the fuel is burned during climb. Climb is more weight sensitive than cruise because extra thrust is needed to lift the weight of the aircraft to cruising altitude. Climb is also at a lower speed than cruise. Thus, it is in the optimizer's interest to reduce the weight of the wing even at the cost of worse high speed performance. It does this with a higher thickness to cord ratio and less sweep. Both enable a thinner skin and thinner spar, which means a lighter wing. What we really want to know is how the benefit of this new mission-based optimization changes as the cruise burn becomes more and more dominant. We do that by running optimizations on mission ranges from 300 to 2900 nautical miles. On the 300 mile mission, the fuel burn is almost entirely in climb. On the 2900 nautical mile mission, most of the fuel is burned in cruise. We see that mission-based optimization reduces fuel burn by over 1% for the shorter missions and about half a percent on average compared to traditional single point. Even though it was not the objective, the wing designed with mission-based optimization is substantially lighter than the wing from single and multipoint. This is important because the purchase price of an aircraft is related to its empty weight, so a lighter wing means a cheaper airplane. For both fuel burn and wing weight, it's reassuring to see that mission-based optimization beats both single and multipoint optimization. Mission-based optimization gives the optimizer the most complete understanding of the mission instead of approximating the fuel burn with the Breguet range equation. This better understanding allows the optimizer to find the best possible wing for the mission. Mission-based optimization produces better results than single and multi-point formulations, but it comes with an added cost. Running cases to train the surrogate model is time consuming, particularly if high fidelity aerostructural analyses are used. Adapting existing codes to do mission-based optimization also takes time. So here's a new idea of how we can take advantage of existing high fidelity tools with some very small modifications to get most of the benefits of mission-based optimization. Instead of using the original Breguet range equation, we derive one with slightly different assumptions. In climb, a component of weight acts in the same direction as drag, counteracting the thrust. By incorporating the slightly different force balance into the derivation, we find a more general equation that can be used with different flight path angles. This new equation more accurately captures the trends in fuel burn with respect to weight and performance at different flight conditions. Now that we have a better fuel burn approximation, we can use it sequentially for different flight segments. We perform one aerostructural analysis in the middle of each flight segment and assume that the airspeed, lift to drag ratio, and flight path angle stay constant within each segment. We then estimate the climb fuel burn using the modified Breguet range equation. For cruise, we use the same equation but use the final climb weight as the initial cruise weight. The same process is used to estimate descent fuel burn. Much less fuel is burned in descent than the rest of the mission, so it can be excluded. Thus, the fuel burn at the end of the cruise segment is used as our objective function. This approach requires hardly any modifications to the code and only two aerostructural analyses, one in climb and one in cruise. We can look at the same plots as before to see how well this new objective performs. For all mission lengths, it outperforms both single and multipoint on the fuel burn objective. Interestingly, the wing weight of this new objective is almost identical to mission-based optimization. This is all done with a small fraction of the aerostructural analyses required for mission-based optimization. The new objective function is flexible in that it can be extended to multipoint and cruise by using multiple parallel cruise segment approximations, and to more complex missions by using additional sequential segments. In this presentation, we discussed why traditional aerostructural optimization techniques may not be suitable for shorter flights where it's important to consider fuel burn and climb. We then introduced a mission-based optimization approach it uses a surrogate of the aerostructural model and a numerically integrated mission to accurately compute the total fuel burn objective function. The results showed how the optimizer optimally balanced the low and high speed performance. On the shorter missions, it decreases climb fuel burn by saving weight with higher thickness to cord ratio at the cost of inferior high speed performance. For shorter missions, mission-based optimization found a wing with more than 1% less fuel burn and 25% lower weight than the traditional optimization approaches. Finally, we introduced a new low-cost objective function that can be implemented in existing codes very easily and still get most of the benefits of mission-based optimization.